seven o'clock. So as we always do, let's please stand for the pledge. Is the flag, please. Yeah. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Hey. So it's been a while since we've done this. So just bear with me. I have to start over all the time getting my iPad, iPhone, the notes that Debbie sends me all together so I don't miss anything. So here we are. Let me just welcome everyone to our FY23 Community Board 2 uh, pub, full board meeting, um, as we always do. Let's take the attendance roll call. Roseanne? I'm right upstairs at the meeting. Okay. Can you hear me? I can. Okay, we're good. Uh, we're good. Go Sean ahead. Abraham? Sean? No? Okay. AJ? No. Igor Babashkin? Antoinette Belzano? Here. I'm here. Dr. Cognata? I'm here. Okay. Here. Robert Colligio, yes. Here, thank you. Can you your penny? No. Zephyr Dormouse? Julie Freeman? Here. Okay. Roy Garlisi? Here. Sal Genovese? Here. Fred Ginta? Here. If anything pops up. Uh, Kang? I'm right there. Okay. It should be good though. Okay, sweet. Mm -hmm. Dr. Khalid? Dr. Khalid? Okay, uh, Lanza is absent, I believe. Debbie, okay. Uh, Diane McNamara? Here. Thank you. Mandy Morosnik? Dr. Perel? Dr. Raju? Jerry Ruggiero? Here. Uh, David Santoro, absent, Debbie? He's absent. He won't be attending tonight. <clears throat> Dr. Seminara. I'm here. See, uh, Steve Zederico. Present. And Steven Zabojski. Present. Thirteen present. Okay. Thirteen. Okay. 13 present or 13 absent? Both. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I, all right, we're good to go. <clears throat> okay, acceptance of the proposed agenda that we mailed out to everyone. I accept. Okay. Okay. Nada, Fred, thank you. Acceptance of the June 21 minutes. Jeff, thank you. Antoinette, thank you. Okay, officers report. So first of all, let me just thank everybody for coming to our meeting again, this starting this FY23 session. Um, we really didn't have much activity over the summer. Um, we did have a couple of meetings, uh, Debbie and I trying to orchestrate what our future and home is gonna look like. And we, we have some, right now we'll be doing this virtually until further notice, but we have a couple of venues that Debbie's working out right now. And as soon as we have something set up, there'll be an email with the instructions on where we'll be meeting for that time frame. anyhow. We did have a borough board meeting last week for the first one for this year, and there wasn't any specific agenda. Um, we just said hello, talked about how the summer went, people getting their COVID vaccine and so on and so forth, and the meeting was adjourned. So that's all I really had to report in that regard. So with that, um, I'll turn it over to the first vice chair, Antoinette. Any report? She's on mute.
Oh, I just, <laughs> I said, uh, no report, Mr. Chairman, other than to say I'm happy to be back and to see all of us looking well. Thank you. Good. Thank you. Fred, second vice chair. Well, welcome back, everybody. i just like to make a quick announcement. Uh, Senator Lanza and uh, Assemblyman Cusick are going to hold a shred event at the Staten Island Mall on Saturday, October 8th, between 11.30 and 2 p.m., and also, uh, they will hold an annual Senior Information Day at the CYO at Mount Loretto, health screening, flu and pneumonia shot, free legal advice. And finally, they will, Senator Landon and Assemblyman Cusick will be holding a veterans barbecue honoring all those who served Sunday, October 16th from 1 to 4 at the Elks Lodge at 3250 Richmond Avenue. Okay. Very good. Thank you, Fred. Yeah, there was some emails, I think, that were going around that Debbie sent to all of us with all the details and the location. Thanks, Fred. Thank you very much. Jerry, would you third vice chair? Uh, no report at this time, Mr. Chairman. Okay, thank you. Roseanne Clift, any report? Uh, no report, but I have to change the attendance to 14 present and 12 absent. I uh, see Dr. Raju. Okay, great. Thank you. Raju, thank you. Welcome. Okay. Roy Garlisi, how are you? You're on mute, Roy. So thumbs up, thumbs down, sideways, piggy bank. <laughs> he's on mute. <laughs> Doesn't sound bad what he's saying. So it sounds like the balance sheet's intact. <laughs> Roy, you're on mute. <laughs> Okay. All right. Thanks, Roy. All right. Okay. I think you got the gist of it. If we had a financial problem, you would have heard about it before this meeting from us. So, okay. All right. Public session. Just give me a minute here just to go through this. We are restricting everyone to two minutes. Um, and Jerry, do you have a, your clock? Can you just give me the thumbs up when time is up? All right. Jerry? He's on okay, mute. No problem. Okay. okay. Great. All right. Very good. Uh, ben Teleski, City Planning Commission. Did you want to speak to us? Hi. Yes. Thanks, Robert. Nice to see everyone. Hope you all had a great summer. Just a quick reminder I'm the CB2 liaison from the Staten Island Office of the Department of City Planning. I just have a couple of quick updates for the board about ongoing work at DCP. So the first is that it's community district needs season. So the fiscal year 2024 community district needs process is underway. And um, I've been having some back and forth with Robert and Deborah. and DCP has provided some guidance about navigating the timeline this year. There's a, uh, the submission deadline is October 31st. And um, just this goes for the whole board. Please don't hesitate to reach out to me um, with, for any assistance or with help answering any questions as you all navigate this process. The second thing is about the Staten Island zoning relief initiative that my office is working on. So some of my colleagues presented to the land use committee about this effort two weeks ago, and I don't, I don't have much to report back just um, in that short time frame, but just wanted to let you all know that we've already met with CB3. We are going to meet with CB1 shortly, and then we'll follow up with you all sometime this fall with next steps. And I'm happy to relay any questions to our project team in the meantime. And the last thing I will flag is the city of yes zoning text amendments. So some of you may be aware of this already, but DCP is working on three really important citywide zoning text amendments, which Mayor Adams announced earlier this year as part of his city of yes initiative. And we will be approaching CB2 likely sometime this fall to bounce some ideas and gather your input. And uh, those, those three zoning text amendments are zoning for zero carbon, zoning for economic opportunity, and zoning for housing opportunity. And you can Google NYC City of Yes to find out more about them. That's all I've Thank got. You, Thank man. you. Thank you very much. Um, before we go further, I just wanted to point out you know, we published this meeting um, in the advance and there's a link 
for anyone that wishes to speak to sign up on the website that Debbie um, includes in that link. And it's very important because we need to be able to track so I can manage the agenda, especially on a virtual basis, and to make sure that those that want to speak get their two minutes. Um, in that regard, I do want to uh, recognize uh, Jean Collini from Santa Melanda's office. She always fills out the form. So with that, Jean, if you want well, to- Well, thank you, Robert. I get an A plus. I appreciate it. You do. It. <laughs> if you wanted to say something, we'll give you an extra two minutes. Up to you. <laughs> but thank, thank you. you. <laughs> I, thank you. Okay. All right. Let me get back to the public session here. We have- um, we do have a presentation after the public session from the Department of Sanitation. We'll get to that in a minute. Public session speakers, we have here Aris Strathopoulos. Did I pronounce it right, Emerson Hill Civic? Good evening. Yes, you did. Thank you. You're welcome. Did you want to say anything, sir? Oh, yes. Uh, I'm starting. Okay. Sorry about yeah. that. No, okay. You got two minutes. Um, to you. Thank you for uh, giving us the opportunity here to speak this evening. Um, I'm uh, speaking on behalf of the Emerson Hill Civic Association. I'm a member of the Civic Association. Uh, I'm also a licensed professional engineer in the state of New York. I'm here to speak on uh, the proposal uh, to build two homes uh, uh, adjacent to Emerson Drive. Uh, for those of you not familiar with the area, Emerson Drive is the main entrance to Emerson Hill. Uh, one of the two entrances, but it's the main entrance. Uh, it's a relatively steep road that comes up uh, from Plove Road and provides access to all the homeowners uh, to their homes up here. Um, there's a proposal to build uh, two homes uh, adjacent to Emerson Drive. And adjacent to Emerson Drive is a very steep slope. Uh, it's extremely steep. Uh, it's so steep, it's not walkable. Uh, the slope. Uh, the homeowners up here in the uh, Emerson Hill Civic Association is extremely concerned about the proposed construction uh, and does not recommend for such a uh, proposal to be approved, primarily because there is a high risk that this construction will eventually lead to extreme erosion of this slope and ultimately collapse of Emerson Drive. Um, the construction will result in deforesting this area, removing all the trees to create room for these homes, also to remove the vegetation that currently stabilizes the slope. Also, the construction will result in dry wells being constructed, which will also introduce more hydration to the, uh, this steep slope and potentially lead to more erosion and, and future instability. This area is already unstable. It does show uh, areas of uh, uh, erosion in as your back two minutes, edges. Your two minutes are up, sir. Are up. You, can, you okay. can send your your comments to district manager for the record. Okay, very good. Thank you for your thank, time. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Jerry. And Lawrence? Constructive partnership. Hi. Hi. Hello, everybody. Uh, oh, hi. I'd good. like to introduce myself. I am the uh, new community liaison for United Cerebral Palsy. Uh, which is now also known as Constructive Partnership, um, CP. And uh, the goal is to bring a lot of community awareness to our organization, although we've been in Staten Island uh, for over 50 years. We have a day habilitation program. We have 11 group homes. Uh, we pr at the... Um, at the Day Habilitation Center, it's the Cora Hoffman Center. We provide individuals with intellectual and physical disabilities with uh, programs such as Article 16, which is speech occupational therapy, um, uh, physical therapy. We have a wheelchair clinic, a, a shoe clinic. We're attached to Metro One, which is part of us. It is a medical facility for the community and the disabled community. 11 group homes in the area. We are uh, the, the only organization in the state of New York to have a new state of the art equipment. It's called the MOVE program where we can get people out of wheelchairs into this equipment and they can actually walk, which will help with digestive and, and every, every internal organ in the body. When we walk, when we're upright, uh, it, it brings more health 
uh, to individuals. Uh, we have uh, at the Cora Hoffman Center, there's a work program. We have a working greenhouse where they actually grow crops, which go to farmers markets on Staten Island. We grow peppers, which are then sent to Smile Farms. They are partners with us out of Long Island. The pepper sauce is sold on 1-800-Flowers, we get all of the profit. No one knows about it. No one knows about so many things. Time's up. You can contact me. Thank you. If you have something to email to Debbie, she can include that with our next meeting minutes. I will. I will. All right. Thank you for your time. Everyone, please understand we have a lot of speakers tonight. Yep. Which is why we, we don't mean to like, shut anybody down. Okay. Jennifer Sanchez, New York Statewide Senior Action. No? Okay. Frank Fontana, Department of Buildings. Good evening, everyone. Um, hi. I uh, hope everybody had a nice summer. Uh, just a couple quick announcements. Uh, one, the uh, buildings after hours. So every Tuesday night from four to seven, any property owner can visit uh, 10 Richmond Terrace, the second floor, to speak of, if they have any issues on their property, property research, violations, any questions about maybe potentially doing work and you're interested in filing for a permit. Um, a staff member will be there to help guide you with any questions that you might have. Uh, secondly, um, this week was announced the uh, so the mayor Adams and um, the small business he has he's he's a very good proponent of the small business community. So SBS and New York City Department of Buildings have um, joined teams, and we now created a, a support resource for business owners. So now we have, on our website, there is a form that the, um, any potential business owners, whether it's a unplanned work or new construction, they're looking to open up a business, they, um, they can talk to somebody at the buildings department or one-on-one -on -one to provide any kind of guidance, uh, support, um, any type of resource that we have available to try to guide them through the whole permitting process. So I guess the idea is that the more information we give them ahead of time, they be able to get their business up and running a lot quicker, the permits need inspections and so forth. So it's a great resource. It's a lot of information. So I would encourage everybody to visit the website um, uh, for more information on that. And, uh, and that's it. Thank you very much. Thanks, Frank. Thank you very much. Gene uh, Guerra, two minutes for Gene. Hi, everybody. Uh, just a couple of things. I wanted to bring you up to date on uh, proposed PS-121. Uh, Board of Education acquired two more buildings on Wild Avenue. Uh, hopefully uh, that will help us uh, try to circumvent some of the problems that we're looking at uh, regarding traffic uh, that's going to be created by this new school, uh, both on Wild and on Shelley. Uh, as I mentioned at the land use meeting, I've requested that Shelley and Wild be widened uh, to accommodate the drop-offs and pickup. Uh, and I'm hoping to hear back from uh, DOT, who's planning a meeting with the SCA uh, with some favorable news on that front. Uh, also, I just wanted to bring to your attention that uh, the community of Travis has not been resurfaced, curb to curb resurfacing in over 30 years. That's three zero. OK, and the reason was because of a sewer project that was on the books and the DOT's funding moratorium for doing anything with respect to streets and resurfacing. That project has been completed since 2021. And I've asked Roseanne uh, to look into this matter because we should have been first on the list for curb to curb resurfacing for the streets that were not affected by SER 200226. And I'm, I'm looking for help from the community board to push DOT into resurfacing some of these back roads that haven't seen resurfacing since probably the year 1980 or before. Thank you. Very good, Gene. Thank you. You know, maybe in that regard, I've heard that before from other communities. Maybe the Traffic and Transportation Committee can have the DOT commissioner maybe hold a meeting and all the civics attend to see how they how they schedule and, and plan the Staten Island repaving project. So um, you'll hear from us on that, Gene, okay? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, yes. am I to ask the question of Gene? 
Sure. Uh, this is public Please. discussion. Go ahead. Go ahead. Hi, Jean. It's Antoinette. I just was driving down Midland Avenue today, which is wider street than where we're going with that school. I mean, it was atrocious. It was pickup time. I think about 20 of two on both sides of the street. I mean, besides the parking, you know, was everybody was double parked picking up the kids. You got the, it, it was just, I thought of the school, you know. So what did we yeah. say about the parking? I mean, it's going to be. If I can just interrupt, if we just get through the public session because we do have other people. I, I do have a question. I just okay, want that, to. You, excuse me. No, that's just, fine. Let me go ahead. Prayers. We need your we need your prayers. <laughs> oh, I know. I mean, you were addressing that, though, right? The pickup, Gene. Yep. Oh yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thanks, yeah, Mr. Chairman. No problem. All right. One second, Gene. Where? Uh, let me go to the chat box. Jahi Rose. Jahi and um, Prince Corbin. Are you in the same affiliation? Okay. Hello. Good. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, thank you for allowing me to speak. I just wanted to um, wish everybody a happy welcome back from summer. Um, the CCRB will be holding our next in-community um, public board meeting in Staten Island in November. Um, that's going to be at the um, Central Family Life Center on Wright Street. Um, I will email out invitations to the community board. If you could share that amongst um, your, your, um, uh, your uh, listserv, that'd be great. Uh, the CCRB is also... I'm going to be doing our change to our rules. So those rules are going to be going into effect as of October of 2020, um, 2022, um, regarding being able to self-initiate complaints um, and investigate bias-based policing. For those that don't know, the CCRB is an agency that investigates uh, police misconduct where it relates to force, uh, abuse of authority, discourtesy, and or offensive language. I left my information inside of the chat. So if you'd like to have a outreach presentation for any one of your groups, community groups, don't hesitate. Please reach out to me and we would love to be able to participate um, and, and facilitate a workshop. Thank you all very much. Have a wonderful night. Thank you very, very much, Chai. Okay. Um, the DA's office, uh, Francesca Galelli. Hi, everybody. Francesca Galelli here from District Attorney Mike McMahon's office. Uh, we hope you had a wonderful summer. And since we last saw you, our office completed a number of cleanups across Staten Island, and we're hoping to complete more before the year is through. So if you have any locations that are plagued by graffiti, litter, illegal dumping, please let us know. You feel free to email me anytime. I will put my information in the chat box. I also want to ask, and I'm sure the 122 precinct will too, um, for you all to continue to lock your car doors and take your valuables with you. Grand larcenies and grand uh, larceny autos continue to plague Staten Islanders, although crime in Staten Island is lower than the other four boroughs at this time. And please be aware of scams too. We're getting a lot of tech scams right now. Um, what else would I like to say? Also, um, on October 22nd, Saturday, October 22nd, we will be having our Sowing Seeds of Hope Addiction Awareness Day. That will be at Brookfield Park from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. And it will be in memory of uh, Bobby Coons Jr. So we are working with the family um, to spread awareness, provide resources, and it will be a general family day. Uh, the students and teachers of IS-34 in Tottenville will be joining us in partnership as well. Uh, and lastly, uh, very quickly, uh, no matter what goes on in the rest of the city, here on Staten Island, we still believe in law and order. And District Attorney Mike McMahon uh, runs a 21st century prosecutor's office, which means we look at the merits and facts of each case and offer diversion programs where appropriate and aggressively prosecute those who commit serious crimes. So while we see the other four, four boroughs uh, you know, really struggle and lose their heads, rest assured we will continue to do everything possible to fight for the victims of crime and hold criminals accountable. So feel free if you have any questions uh, to contact me anytime, I will give you my phone number and email as well. Excuse me, I should turn that off. Thank you very and much, Francesca. Appreciate it. Thank you. Okay, um, I'm just going through the chat box here. I think we picked up everyone. We have, um, though not requested to speak, that she did um, put a chat in the chat box here. Greetings, everyone. Flurry E. Batiste, Adrian, the mayor's office to end domestic gender-based violence. Um, there's some information in the chat box to reach out on October 20th. We invite people to wear the color purple and to tag us New York City Against Abuse for Domestic Violence Awareness Month. So I just wanted to get requested to put that message in there. All right, thank you very much. We got it. Okay, I think we picked up all of the speakers. 
We have one more presentation here um, by Mr. Richard Day of the Department of Sanitation, who briefly discussed the leaf collection that's coming up in the fall in our district. Mr. Day, are you here? Yes, I'm here. Thank um, you. Welcome. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Uh, Staten Island, too, is actually my, well, where I grew up, so it's good to be back. Um, mm -hmm. So, uh, sorry, this isn't going to be super long. I'm going to keep it nice and brief for everyone. Um, just here to talk about our special fall leaf collection. I'm sure you're all familiar with it. We've been doing this for over 20 years at this point, I think. Um, so uh, you're all collecting your leaves anyway, right? L raking your fall leaves. All we're asking is that you set them out on these two special collection days, um, being Sunday, November 27th, or Sunday, December 11th. So we can, so we at the Department of Sanitation can collect your leaves and actually turn them into compost. Um, you guys are lucky because you're actually right next to our Staten Island compost facility, so you can go grab some yourself if you want. Um, but otherwise, this does uh, make the compost that we do distribute to New Yorkers throughout the entire year. Um, so all we ask is that you set out these leaves in um, paper lawn and leaf bags, which I'll actually be providing um, to the office. So um, feel free to drop by and get those or however um, Debbie wants to organize that. I'll leave it up to her. Uh, so you can either set out your leaves in paper lawn and leaf bags, as I said, or in unlined rigid containers. Um, so all that really means is a trash can just with no bag or anything inside of it. Um, just to make it super clear to our sanitation workers, these are leaves, they should be collected as compost and not as trash. Um, so that's really all I've got. If you want more information, you can go to nyc.gov um, slash leaf collection, and I'll put that in the chat as well. Um, if anyone does have any questions. I don't know if you want to take them now. Otherwise, please feel free to reach out to me um, afterwards. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. Debbie has your contact information. Okay, great. All right. Thank you. Okay. I think I um, completed the public session. I'm just going through my notes here. Yes, we've completed the public session. Okay. Standing committee reports. Dr. Seminara. If you don't have any. Yes, hi, I'm unmuted. Um, okay. Thank you very much. Um, we did not do any specific work over the summer, of course, um, uh, still very involved with advocacy for uh, geriatric patients being able to receive their vaccines. Remember, there was a geriatric specific um, flu vaccine, and there is a new pneumococcal vaccine, Prevnar 20, which is a one and done. You may have been used to getting pneumococcal vaccines in series or um, every five to 10 years. Now you just get the Prevnar 20 and you can be done. So anyone who has any specific questions about vaccines, they can, of course, send them to me. Um, I did want to bring up one thing that um, I just have a question about. Um, I received notification from the water board that um, my water has carcinogens in it and uh, advising me of that. I received that on first one water board uh, uh, missive and then I got another one about two months later. So I don't know if others on the board had received that or if you had any recommendations on what to do about that. Um, you know, uh, exposure to carcinogens is a significant health issue, uh, particularly for you know, the uh, elderly who may not be able to afford getting bottled water for all of their um, ingestion needs. Um, if anyone else has had such a, received such a thing, let me know. I, I, I'm gonna dig through Deb and send to you what I received and just sort of, I ask you all like, what should I do about this? I mean, How I've been- How did you get it? Was, it? was it a letter or an email? It was a letter. Really? It was a letter. It was talking about, it was saying that, you know, here's a breakdown of, of byproducts in your water. Um, and um, unfortunately there are carcinogens and, you know, uh, consider using bottled water. <laughs> okay. I mean, we've been doing it now, you know, and, and I should have brought it up towards the end of last year. And then we got another notification and my husband's like, this is ridiculous. What's going on with this? So I thought I'd bring it to my friends here. And <laughs> <laughs> has any suggestions on what to do i mean I, I or if anybody had heard that you know please ask around see if anyone else has i'll check no, and important. i will forward um what i received to deb and um I'm i don't know it's kind of any any information for you to call or follow up and get some yeah some. you know and it wasn't specific about what the carcinogenic material was um, or the levels or that, the levels uh, it may have you know 
tell you a Many filter? Parts per million or something. But mm, it right. wasn't clear, but it was just like a warning. Like, you know, you, you may want to uh, uh, use bottled water. So my back is getting, he you know, tired lifting those heavy yeah, carry cases those of cases. bottled water. Right? Stop and shop. Those yeah. cases are a bit tough. Yeah. So no, that's good to know. No, I'm glad you shared that. And I'm going to look yeah. at you. So I got those in the mail too. All right. Very good. Mm -hmm. All right. Take for granted, you put the thing on, drink the water. <laughs> I mean, really, yeah. yeah. Don't take Thank it you for very granted. much. Okay. Just, uh, Bob, uh, yes. just a week ago, there was an issue, I believe it was in Brooklyn or Manhattan, where they had arsenic in, in the project. And they seemed yeah. to jump on that pretty good. And they did. I'm yeah, that's, that's true. Uh, that it's probably DEP, or we can maybe follow up with somebody from the mayor's office. That's there. the one, Steve, where they admitted the lab technician. They made a mistake when they analyzed the water. That was at the NYCHA project, right? Yeah, yeah, but at least they were able to follow up and find they out. Did. So maybe yeah. it could be something with that. And I'm, I'm hoping wow. that it's maybe not a scam, but <laughs> some companies trying to get her testing or, you know, anything like that. But, you know, if it is, I'd find out ASAP and I'd try going to DEP possibly or, or three one. I'm check one, also. Two. I'm going to check my website. It's my account's electronic. I'm going to check that. Thanks, Doc. Good luck with that. <laughs> oh, yeah. All right. Um, Roy Garlisi, you're on mute, but I think you sent all the information to Debbie already. Thumbs up, Roy. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Steve Zetarico, did you want to add anything on the environmental side this year? Um, well, we didn't have a meeting at all, but I, I did go to a park's dedication at uh, the Berry Homes. It was MacArthur Park, and they named it after two guys yeah, I, nice. I actually grew up with in Berry Homes, and um, they got both were killed in Vietnam. And I thought it was very fitting. We had a, a great turnout from people who lived there <laughs> and knew them through the years. And, you know, Staten Island's a small place, and uh, the Parks Commissioner came from Manhattan, and uh, the Borough Commissioner uh, was, was there, too. There was a lot of representation. I thought they did a great job. It was, it was a heartwarming uh, day there. But that's about it right now is... But Thank you. That seems to be a bad issue with that uh, contaminated water. Well, you know, in that regard, you know, Debbie was good enough to email all of us about district needs and community board too. So if any, if any of you that received it had any comments or ideas that need to be looked into or at least get on some list of some city agency, we know from our experience, if we put nothing, there will be nothing. So if you have any items or agenda or things of improvements that improve the quality of life in CB2, just please email or send them to Debbie so she can put them on the appropriate list and the appropriate emails that we get weekly, daily, monthly, asking for district needs. And they think, the city must think that CB2 doesn't need anything. <laughs> we, you know, we don't really have active meetings on district needs. We've done it maybe once or twice, um, but it needs to come from all of you guys here to generate the items in your communities um, so that we can create that conversation and we can have the right meetings. So I just wanted to put that out there to everybody. So thank you. Um, before we go down, I, I'm, I'm going to do the land use session last. I just want to finish with the standing committee reports. And, um, and then if the other, we only have a three more and then we'll get to land use and then wrap this up. Uh, law, legislative and ethics. Mendy's not here, so I don't think we have anything to report on that regard. Traffic, <coughs> Jerry. No report at this time. We had no meeting. Okay. Dr. Raju, I knew you wanted to say something. Yeah, and, and I, <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm losing my voice. Um, we are try trying to arrange a first meeting in the first week in October. So hopefully we'll have a, a report the next meeting. Um, okay. Okay. Thank you. Sandy Dietrapani is not here, so we don't have the youth service report. All right, so let me get into the land use then. David Santoro is the land use chair. He couldn't make it, so he texted me and asked me if I would take care of this matter for him, and I agreed to do that. So with that regard, we're going to jump into the land use matter. This is in regard to a city planning application number N220186ZAR. This is at the intersection of Clove Road and Emerson Drive, also known as Block 828, Lot 116. The application is pursuant to zoning resolution 105-422 to authorize the development of a portion, development on a portion of a zoning lot having a steep slope or steep slope buffer to facilitate construction of two single family homes on one zoning lot within special natural area district NA-1. All the information was shared with the board a while back. Um, and we, we heard this matter at our September 6th land use uh, subcommittee meeting 
and um, the applicant was there. We discussed the project at length. Um, the land use took the vote and it was a zero in favor, 11 opposed, zero abstain and not entitled. So if the applicant is here to talk about the project, they have, if anyone has any questions, um, but I do know that Mr. Severio does want to enter a record, a letter into the public record uh, regarding clarification of some of the statements and comments made during the land use, which we will do. Um, and Debbie has the letter and become part of the record when Debbie notifies city planning on the board's uh, decision tonight. We do have members of Emerson Hill Civic Association here to talk about the project. So um, as we always do, I just want to turn it over to the applicant. If anyone has any questions about this project specifically, we'll open that up. Um, if not, um, then we'll go to uh, proceed to a vote. <laughs> Okay, not having any questions, no comments. All the comments and um, comments from the Emerson Hill Civic are in the public record, Debbie has them, and they'll become part of the application. So I just wanted to make sure that everyone that had an opportunity to talk about this has done so, um, and we have done that. Okay, so with that, we're gonna take a vote on a land use application, city planning application number N220186 ZAR, Clove Road, Emerson Drive, Block 828, Lot 116. Application pursuant to Zoning Resolution Section 105-422 to authorize development on a portion of a zoning lot having a steep slope or steep buffer to facilitate construction of two single family homes on one zoning lot within Special Natural Area District NA1. So you vote yes if you're in favor of this project and you vote no if you're not. Roseanne? Um, I have to change the uh, attendance again. AJ. And Kang. So that okay. would be 16 present, uh, 10 absent. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Okay, uh, please. Okay. AJ? Yes. In favor? Yes. Uh, Antoinette? So Antoinette? No, not in favor, or yes, if you're in favor. Antoinette, you're on mute. No. I'm a no. Dr. Cognato? No. Uh, Robert Collegio? No. Uh, Julie Freeman? No. Roy Garlisi? Thumbs down from Roy. No. Uh, Sal Genovese? Yes. Fred Ginta? No. Kang? He's on mute. Thumbs down. Right. Okay. Diane McNamara? Yes. I didn't hear you, bro. Hmm? I didn't hear you. Dr. Raju. Oh. No, no. Okay. Jerry Ruggieri? No. Dr. Seminara? No. Steven Zederico? No. Steven Zaboinski? No. Okay. 13, no. No. There were, I think there were three yeses. Yeah, three in favor. So the motion has not passed. Is that correct, Ro? Am I correct? Yes. Okay, okay thank you. 13 opposed, three in favor. Okay, thank you. Um, before I, I close this particular matter up, there was one question from the Emerson board. Someone had written to the board and, and city planning. I think, Ben, was it you or that was able to address the process for the people from, from all the applications actually and how you guys analyze them or if it was misdirected then we don't need to get into that there was a response i think also yeah i i did send a reply email to the emerson hill civic yesterday okay so the emerson hill civic has the reply so they'll be able to understand the process and that city planning controls the land use um, by law okay so that'll become part of the public record all right, not having said anything else we close that matter up and um, we'll report to city planning accordingly. All right.
right. With that, um, any old business? Hmm. Any new business? I'd like to ask uh, if uh, Mr. Fontana or Mr. Pavleski are both here about the um, sidewalk sheds and restaurant sheds that are, all, that are still up every place, taking up parking spots and parking lots in its entirety. And to me, as a former fire chief, they look like a pile of rubbish against a building that's made out of wood or plastic. And if they go on fire, they're going to take the rest of the building with them. I don't think there's any emergency lighting, emergency exits, any rule, rise, or reason how they would apply would. Um, and how long are they going to be around for? And um, has the city have a plan for this? And uh, I think that maybe Mr. Fontana or Mr. Pavleski uh, may know. I'm curious. Uh, as far as DLB is, um, the sidewalk sheds are in, uh, at least for, for the businesses, they're in the street. So it's not our responsibility unless it was attached to a building and they would have required a permit. But I believe the city and sanitation were looking to remove a lot of them. Um, so you may want to follow up. Anyone that are on the sidewalk or on the street you may want to follow up with them. Oh, I'm, I'm, I mean, dozens and dozens are attached to buildings, maybe not permanently, but they are attached to buildings. So right. I, I don't know where, where to go with this, to tell you the truth, other than talk to you guys. If they're permit, if, if they applied for a permit and we approved it, they, they could be allowed. Um, we've seen a lot of cases where people just didn't get permits for them and they have received violations. Okay. Uh, they, may, they may not even be allowed, uh, but they did put them up. And if we get a we long complaint, we'll go out and inspect it. Um, then we're required to take it down if they get a violation. Yeah. yeah, it just seems like it was willy nilly and an emergency at the time, but everybody's eating indoors now. They're not really necessary. Anymore. Right. All right, thank uh, you. If you have any particular locations we can look at. Um, um, oh, I, it's one of my favorite restaurants. I don't want to tell you. <laughs> well, that takes care of that. Okay. <laughs> now, this, but they're all over the place. You just have to drive oh, down. No, you're right. Any you're road right. on Staten yeah. Island, any park lot, any supermarket, any area where there's restaurants, they're all over the place. There's, right. there's a, probably a thousand of them on Staten Island. You're absolutely right. Yeah. yeah. Good uh, point, Steve. Good point. Thank you. Yeah, if you see us, let Frank know directly. I'll just. I'll, I'll look into that. I'll look at that a little bit more, and I'll follow up with the board. Thank you. Yeah, I'll just. This is Ben. I'll just add quickly that there was um, an open restaurants text amendment that was approved yeah. back in February, which updated, yeah. which updated the rules, which were created in in haste at the beginning of the the pandemic. Um, and yeah, other than that, I don't have anything to add besides what Frank said. But I will grab my email in the chat if anyone wants to reach out with any questions and I can get back to you or direct you to the correct agency. Very good, thank you. Okay, you know, since there was no old business, we had some new- a quick question, Robert. Yes, sir. Do we know why they're digging along the Staten Island Expressway, what they're doing there? Seems they've been there quite some time. Where, by Bradley Avenue? Yeah, I think so. No, yeah, no, that, yeah. They came before us. That's that bridge rehabilitation project going on up there. Bridge? In the Midland yeah. Across okay. the expressways, right? Yeah. Yeah, wow. yeah they have, remember they came to us and they had to reroute the traffic um, and the people from um, all that whole area came out to make sure that the school buses and the MTA buses wouldn't be impacted and they accommodated all of those requirements and we voted in favor. Because the bridge was going to collapse, those bridges, remember? They had to fix them. Yeah. Well, and all of you that live in Newdorf, you should check Newdorf Lane. Lane, they double park, they leave their cars there, and they go into the store. And there's nobody in the car. It's true. Yeah. It's true. Start, okay, yeah. I'm done. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, one more time, I want to make sure everybody had an opportunity to say something. If not, then I will make a motion to adjourn. Does anyone else have anything they would like to add or say before I, uh, I hit the motion. button? Well, one thing, one thing. When are we going yes, back to in, in-person meetings? That hasn't been established yet. Um, we haven't gotten any guidance from the governor's office yet. And as soon as Debbie does, I'll be the fourth to know, and you'll be the fifth. So, And, and just to add something to what Fred just spoke about, I believe mm -hmm. part of the traffic is you know, they're widening the expressway to have the HOV lane continue into, going to the Gothels Bridge. Going that, to the Gothels that's Bridge. on the other end. Yeah, we approved that, that all. Would be smart. Yes, we did. Yes, we did. Yeah. 
That's it. I'm done. Thank you. Good night. What we're seeing are the fruits of our labor. Maybe now we don't like what we see, but yeah, it's all, they're all short term. They're all going to be good once everything is, is, if there's ever a time without an orange cone on the expressway, it'll be a good time. So, all right, everybody, I'm going to motion to adjourn. Thank, thank you, Jerry. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks, everybody. Debbie, uh, have a wonderful night. Steps. We got I know. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Good night, everybody. Thank you. Uh, good night. Good night. Good night.